This uncle braved the extreme temperature of minus 30 degrees in the Antarctic drilling ice cap. As a result, he accidentally stabbed the bottom of the ground cracked. It looks very dangerous. He heard a crunching sound. The crack has drawn a circle around him. He couldn't escape. The main character David in the tent also felt the vibration. He opened the door to see. The uncle has sunken down. They rushed to pull the uncle's hand. But as soon as they grabbed, the ground collapsed. There was a big bottomless fissure. David had to jump to the other side of the crack to get the specimen back. This is the fruit of their months of work. He was just coming back. His companion shouted. Don't jump, because the crack was getting wider and wider. But David had been a long jumper in his youth. He landed right on the edge of the cliff but the ground caves in. He escaped by using a small hammer to dig into the corner of the wall. He pulled himself up with the help of his companions. Then the three men could see a huge hole in the earth. An international conference is taking place. From the podium, David issues a warning. He says that warming is triggering another ice age. The whole planet is going to freeze to ice sticks. The chief is a little confused. Isn't global warming supposed to be hotter? How can it be colder? David gets to the point. The two things that sound so contradictory are actually logical. Warm currents in the oceans distribute heat to where the earth needs it. But because of global warming, the glaciers are melting. The warming currents are affected and gradually stop. The earth doesn't get the heat. The warm weather will disappear and will go back to the ice age. But no one believes him. The vice president of the United States is even more adamant in his disagreement with energy conservation and emissions reduction. He said it would affect economic growth. But then the camera turns. The meeting was held in India. It was snowing in India, which is always hot. The weather station staff woke up to find that an ocean buoy had detected an instant 13 degree drop in the temperature of the water. The person in charge was busy watching the European Championship. Sugar-colored machine may have malfunctioned. And there was a sudden hailstorm in the sky in Japan, east of the Pacific Ocean. Birds are fleeing in flocks over New York City. Animals are anxious and restless. But the anomalies around the world are not getting enough attention. David returns home to take his son Jack to the airport. Jack is a genius. He was able to write the results on his math test by doing mental math. But without the reasoning process, the teacher awarded him a zero. David misunderstood Jack this time. Because of the long business trip he and his son a little distant relationship. But before he could make it up to his son, the International Space Station had found a bunch of stormy air masses on the surface of the Earth. Sure enough, soon after the Los Angeles Weather Service received a tornado warning, the skyline extended a strong flow of air that intersected with the ground. There were several tornadoes in Los Angeles at the same time. Hollywood signs were blown down. Cars were flying all over the freeway. Street reporters are live and excited. A billboard came flying. And people died. The government called a meeting of scientists from all over the country. David's hypothesis was correct. But the vice president is still not convinced. He made the excuse that we were prepared for all of this. David advised him that if we didn't evacuate, it would be too late. But the old man rolled his eyes. Three British helicopters braved the blizzard to pick up the queen. They accidentally flew into the center of the air mass. It's so beautiful and peaceful. But no one noticed the ice on the windshield. The temperature outside instantly dropped 100 degrees. The helicopter iced up and went down fast. The pilot was instantly frozen as soon as he exited the cabin. The weather station spotted several ocean buoys indicating a sudden drop in temperature. The old scientist knew the disaster was coming and he called David to let him know. Based on the data provided by the scientists, David calculated that the entire northern hemisphere will experience an instantaneous 100-degree drop in temperature in turn. Within 10 days, the Earth will enter an ice age. Because the vice president didn't listen to David's advice, the United States must now abandon half of its citizens in the North and leave them to fend for themselves. That's a huge price to pay. David's son, Jack, was on a plane that almost went down because of it. After the plane landed in New York, it rained super hard for days at a time. This homeless man found a sewer that couldn't stop pouring when he took shelter from the rain. His classmates wanted to go home. Jack decided to pull them to the library on high ground to escape the water. The sea swallowed the Statue of Liberty and pounded the skyscrapers. Bus drivers stuck in traffic were dumbfounded. People had a free experience of the big surf in the water park. But the girl Jack likes is still helping people. He looked into the distance and then rushed into the water to pull the girl and run. The sea was soon coming from all directions. Jack called David for help, but the call was disconnected. 
David. The father's heart was about to explode. He decided to go to New York to look for his son. It was soon snowing in New York, and a huge ship came by the library. People heard the government was evacuating south. The police organized everyone to leave on foot as well. Jack didn't agree, because David had told him on the phone that the temperature could drop 100 degrees at any moment. But no one listened to him. Only a few people were willing to stay. They were trapped in the library by the blizzard. They smashed vending machines for food and burned books to keep warm. But those who left the library soon froze to death on the way. David rushed to New York with two colleagues. The car crashed into a snowbank and couldn't be driven. He had to go on foot. He knew the odds were against him. The snow was so thick that it reached the tops of the buildings. They didn't even know it. They were walking on a glass roof. The glass shatters. The sled car fell. With the people dragged down, the ground collapses and the men fall. Fortunately, the safety rope is tied to the teammate. David wipes away the snow. He found a piece of glass underneath. He knew it wouldn't last long. The man who fell in the air also understood. He cut off the sled that was hanging on him to reduce the weight. The sled soon fell into two sections, but the glass was still breaking with the naked eye. The palm of his colleague's hand was bleeding from the support. It was still too heavy. No choice. The man raised his knife. This time he's going to cut his own safety cord. David yells no, but the knife fell from his hand. David's grief was overwhelming. This man was his longtime colleague and friend. In the New York City library, the janitor was holding on to the Bible to keep it from burning, because it was the first Bible ever printed by man. If Western civilization is destroyed, he says he can at least keep a small piece of it. Jack's goddess suddenly developed a high fever. She had septicemia from a traumatic injury to her lower leg. She had to take antibiotics immediately or she would die. Jack said there must be medicine in the big boat next to the library. He's going to find it. The International Space Station has spotted a supercloud over New York. Meteorologists say New York City will experience an instantaneous 100-degree drop in temperature within an hour. By this time, Jack and his group had already gone out to the ship. They were followed by a couple of escaped wolves from the zoo. They found the medicine. And the wolves found them. One of their companions was almost dragged away by the wolves. They were trapped in the kitchen. The clouds arrive in New York just in time. Temperatures will soon drop by 100 degrees at 10 degrees per second. Jack flips out the window to distract the wolves. The trio escaped through the back door. But they're barely halfway there. The cooling began. Fortunately, the cold air is falling from above. They had a little time to escape back to the library and close the door. The cold instantly froze the door to ice and kept spreading in. The group had to burn books to keep the heat in. But did it work? After the cool down, David and his colleagues saw that the road was full of people who had died in the extreme Korean wave. The man in the scarf was the policeman who had left the library. They didn't make it. Mankind is no match for nature. But David is convinced that 30,000 years ago, man survived an ice age. This time, too. His only concern is whether his son Jack will survive the extreme temperatures. Good news from the space station. They're finding that clouds are disappearing all over the globe. But the entire northern hemisphere has been frozen to ice. In the morning David gets out of his tent. He found a huge ship standing in front of him. The sun was rising. And it was beautiful. It was the Atlantic Ocean beneath their feet. They crossed the Statue of Liberty and finally arrived in New York. They arrived at the library and found it dead and dull. David's heart was instantly cold, until he saw a door. There was a little fire through the door. He unscrewed the icy doorknob and woke them up with a flashlight. They were all alive. Jack also recognized that his father had kept his promise to save him. Father and son hugged each other tightly. The Air Force picked up everyone who survived in New York City. But as the entire northern hemisphere became glaciated, the United States moved to South America. Mexico welcomed them with open arms. Astronauts from outer space marveled that they had never seen such a clear sky. Director Roland Emmerich wanted to make a much larger disaster movie in 2004. Due to budget constraints, he had to shoot this one first and gain experience later. And the disaster film he had in mind did not meet people until 2009. See you next time.